when did you start living a faithful life? And then I want to hear from you, Jess, when did you have your encounter? And I know you had had encounters, but what was the moment when you really, the light turned on for you with faith that you wanted to live a life of faith? Mm -hmm. For me, it was definitely synchronous. I mean, gradual. Um, it wasn't one moment of inflection. I think Jess has more of a, a kind of a, you know, road to Emmaus sort of, or road to, not Emmaus. <laughs> What's the other one? St. <laughs> Paul and the horse moment. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but for me, it was a series of things, and a lot of it through the relationship with Jessica. Um, that kind of brought sacrament. me, and through the sacrament mm -hmm. of matrimony, mm -hmm. frankly, getting married, like opened up a whole like treasure trove of grace for us. So well, you, you, mm -hmm. you got yeah. married in the church. We did. Yes. Yeah. Before you were Catholic. Before I was anything, really. And thank God nobody asked me, Lila, why it was important for me to get married in the church. Because I wouldn't have been able to tell them why. Yeah. But it was. It was like, we're going to get married in the church. And if we have kids, our kids are going to go to Catholic school. Those and, were his two non-negotiables. And when you got married, you knew when you were entering that sacrament like this is where we, we're not supposed to divorce we're supposed to have kids we're supposed 100%. to raise them catholic he knew that so you knew you knew the basics i did mm -hmm. yes and so and you wanted to do the basics i did he yes did. and i wanted to just do and go wherever he went basically yeah, yeah. so you were saying yes yes to these basics because yeah, it's you I, was, I just i'd never encountered anybody male wise all of my male relationships up to him were toxic or deformed Right. My dad was absent. I longed for a good relationship with him, but because he wasn't there, it just it wasn't happening. You know, my stepfathers, that relationship that was n not really good relationships. Um, one was an alcoholic, you know, so um, and then on the streets, your male relationships are definitely not healthy. Um, and then obviously suffering abuse. So when I met him, I had not encountered a male-female relationship like this. And once I did, it was like, you know what? I'm not going to let this go. <laughs> like I, wherever you want to go, I'm going. Whatever you want to do, you want to live in the car, I'll live in the car with you. Like I just wanted to be wherever he was because of – and what I didn't realize at the time, and I obviously know now, is that he was treating me with the dignity to th that I deserved. Um, and that's what felt so good and right. And that's what I was. And the was reason I was, to. the reason I was doing that, despite evidence to the contrary and how I was living my life is because the seeds of the faith had been planted. Yes. I had those. By seeds. your upbringing By and my the modeling upbringing of your parents. And the modeling of my parents. And despite the fact that, you know, we moved around a lot and we lived in foreign countries and all this other stuff, there was enough there, even though we didn't have a very vibrant faith life in a lot of my childhood to say that these fundamentals are real. Mm -hmm. So the idea of we're going to get married in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. again, thank God nobody asked me why. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have our kids raised in a Catholic environment, Catholic Well, you probably school. would have said it's because it's my, my parents. Is, is I'm Catholic. Well, of course right? I would have said an answer, but I'm saying it would have been a lame answer. Mm. Be like, I don't know, because my parents did it, right? Like, But I you know, still did it. I, I think that yes. like I, 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 I know people listening to the show have friends or they have kids or they have whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, there's people who get married a lot in the Catholic Church even today, and they're not fully maybe aware of why, the mm -hmm. fullness of the why, right? Yeah. yeah. Or they're baptizing their baby and they're not even going to Mass every Sunday maybe. Yeah. But I think what you're saying here, Deacon, and what you're saying, Jess, is so powerful that this seed, this seed that needs watering, I mean, this is this is this is good, you know? We can 100%. celebrate. This is a start, yeah. this is a starting place. Yeah. Well, the sacraments are powerful like that. And that's what we're working with. I agreed. Here's what so I come from an unchurched background. We didn't have religion or prayer or anything in my household. My father's mother, my nana, my grandmother on my father's side, um, came from Italy. So it's very strong Italian background. And she um, was raised Catholic, but circumstances led her outside of the church when she was here. Um, so there was a little bit of exposure there. You know, an uncle who was Protestant who would talk about Jesus all the time whenever I was around him as a kid, a little bit there. So it's not like um, I didn't know there was a God. I didn't know who this Jesus was or anything like that. I would literally see pictures of him in my Nana's trailer, you know, growing up. And, and even when I was homeless, you know, Christians would come to the streets to give us bottles of, you know, food and like all that kind of stuff. And they would say, you know, Jesus is here. He's with you trying to, you know, evangelize to us and save us. And but to me, it was, well, well, where is he 
first of all, he was he here last night when that happened to me? You know what I mean? And if and if that's who your God is, where he doesn't stop it from happening or doesn't do anything, then I don't want any part of that. And so I was, I think God knew that because of the circumstances I, I was living in, that I wasn't going to go to him, right? That he had to come to me in a sense. And that's how I see meeting my husband is I think God knew that I needed to meet God through him in order to really, truly learn and understand and believe who I am really and what I'm created for. So it's through our sacrament because it was really after we got married that everything just started turning into turmoil for me. Like you'd think I'm married, I'm a stay at home mom, I'm, you know, I, I have no need of anything, which is the complete opposite of my entire life before I meet him. And I'm miserable. Like, I'm just, I'm unhappy. I'm struggling. Who am I? Am I this street kid from Fort Lauderdale? Or am I this stay-at-home mom in Los Angeles? You know, it's like everything was colliding in on me interiorly. Um, and that sent me to therapy because I'm not, you know, I don't have this belief. I don't have a faith background to lean on. For him, it's cultural. So it's not like he's sharing it with me like oh you know we should go to church or do this and we would we would go to mass randomly yeah like easter you know? christmas and yeah again the cultural things my parents would come over we would even do novenas like leading up to christmas yeah. and things like that but it was like <laughs> again it was like tamales you know what i mean right. it just it didn't yeah there's no relationship mm -hmm. there um, when did the relationship start for you both and you just that meaning you maybe it's the therapy but you started to connect to a God, mm. it to a God who loved you. It became your Catholic faith, not just mm. something you would occasionally do with Damascus. Is what I was trying to say. <laughs> <earlier>. Damascus, <laughs> the road to Damascus. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, because um, that was your experience. Was a Damascus. Yeah, experience. I mean, look, I didn't see the need for God. So, and I honestly, I just believed what Oprah said. You know, Oprah would tell me the powers within me, you got all control of your life, you know, you are the one in control, learn how to harness that and just go and think good things, get good things. You know, I was, I was trying to do that to find peace. And so I was in therapy for seven years and therapy was good for me in a sense that it taught me how to deal with my traumas. It helped me learn where they came from and kind of tie everything together um, but then once I did that, I did, I felt lighter, I felt better. Um, but then I was on this search. I was hunger. I was hungry for this power, right? Where is this thing that Oprah says I have and that all women have? And so I looked to the world to go find it. I started, and then I started, you know, reading about Buddhism because I'm like, oh, they have peaceful, they're peaceful people. Let me go read about that. And so I was looking there and then I fell into this, um, new age kind of religion called self-realization. Um, and they had a temple, they have a temple in Pacific Palisades. And so I started meditating. And my goal was, I thought that if I reached the highest heights in meditation, that I would reach that power, right? That place, that nirvana. I even dragged him into one of <laughs> <laughs> our, our kids were younger and I would take the kids to mass on Sunday. Yeah. Like, you know, because again, not maybe not every weekend, but a lot. Right. While she would go off to the Pacific Palisades to meditate. Yeah. By the lake, yeah. lake shrine. Literally by yeah. the lake shrine. Yeah. And then one time when I was there, I'm meditating and I'm trying to reach this, this place. The light was shining through my eyelids. Like I was being shown on. And I don't know if that's the right way to say that. Yeah, but shown. Um, And I opened it. And the temple that they worship at is on top of a hill there. And it has a, a gold dome at the top. And the sun was shining on it and glaring down on me. And it got my attention. And I was just like, oh, I've never actually been in there. I've never seen what it looks like. Let me go in there and see what it looks like. And so I walk in. And it's shaped like a hexagon. And in the back are these really big, long tapestries of the of the avatars, like the people that they look up to and worship and, and admire, right, and pray to. And there were six of them. And that's when I looked up at them and I was like, oh, I saw Jesus on one of them in the center. And I immediately thought to myself, well, what are you doing here, <laughs> right? Like, 
in Because they're like Gandhi or, and yeah. yeah, Paramahansa, Paramahansa Yogananda, Yogananda and like, like all the, like, you know, all of the Krishna. those people. Yeah. So it was like I was not expecting to see something that looked like it was in my Nana's house, right? And so as soon as I asked myself that question, just my whole being filled. And it was like the only way I know how to explain it is that it's heavy that's not actually heavy. It's just fulfilling. And and I fell to my knees and I had a mystical experience where the Jesus one kind of came out. He came out like a hologram and was literally right there in front of me. And I he looked at me and he basically said, welcome. I'm glad you're here. 